Hey, hi, uh, well, it's me again. Uh, we're making another video about the Blackmagic Pixis. Now, one of the things that people kind of complain about is going to be the shutter readout that you can get out of this camera. It's not the fastest in the world. The Blackmagic Pixis can do a lot of things, but getting global shutter readouts in terms of the sensor, maybe not gonna be the best thing in the world. However, there are three different ways that you can combat rolling shutter, actually in camera, the free DaVinci Resolve software, and also something practically that you can do on set. But well, uh, well, we'll get there. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually windowing down on your sensor. Now, the Pixis actually has the ability to use different modes in terms of your aspect ratio, and with that, you're gonna have different sensor readouts. Now, I'm gonna do that stupid Call of Duty test where we're gonna swing the camera back and forth, and we're gonna compare what some of these clips look like while they're side by side. Now, while shooting in 6K, you're going to have that open gate where you're gonna shoot three by two. This is where you're gonna get the slowest readout at about 25 milliseconds, where if you're doing a lot of handheld or you're shooting a lot of fast moving objects, it might not be the best thing in the world. However, you can use that 6K sensor and window down to different aspect ratios in order to make your life a little bit easier. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different examples while shooting at 6K at different aspect ratios as I freeze frame throughout some of these clips, and you can make the decision for yourself if there is going to be any improvement in terms of my rolling shutter. On top of that, you could window down to even having a lower resolution and going down to Super 35 or even Super 16 to get slightly different readouts as well. If you're somebody that uses cinema lenses in Super 35 format, this helps out a lot because you have to window down anyways and you can get a better readout while using some of those lenses but still having a high quality sensor. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of a different one, but you could actually try using anamorphic as well. You can go down to a 2-4-1 aspect ratio on the Blackmagic Pixis, and you have another anamorphic deliverable as well if you're shooting in Super 35. But one cool fact is that the fastest read that you can get out of the Pixis is going to be in those anamorphic deliverables. So technically speaking, if you are shooting an anamorphic, you might actually get a shutter readout that's favorable, while at the same time getting close to deliverable that you probably are going to use anyways. Okay, well, let's be real for like two seconds here. All of those kind of sucked. Even when you can reduce some of the rolling shutter, you're still going to get that jello, which for a lot of people is going to be off-putting. In fact, there's people in my comment section that make a point to tell me about the rolling shutter every single Pixis video. But there is a fix that'll get rid of a, at least a significant amount of it to make things a little bit more usable. And that's using gyro stabilization in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I am gonna shout out Eddie G. He actually made a video that was really useful about the exact same topic, ironically, the same time that I was shooting and finished this video. So I am gonna put that video on there as well if you want to get another perspective. But we're going to go into DaVinci Resolve, and this is actually pretty easy to do. Once you've highlighted one of your clips, if you're using a Blackmagic Pixis or Full Frame 6K, you're going to get a fourth option in your Stabilization and Stabilization tab. This is going to be the Gyro Data. Now, you actually don't need to put the strength up very high, and actually this Stabilization is just meant to stabilize footage. However, it does get rid of some of the rolling shutter artifacts. I am going to put a side-by-side -side of some of those same clips that I did where the rolling shutter was really bad, and I'm just going to play them for you to be able to see, and you can see an improvement, especially when we're panning the camera back and forth. Though I kind of don't recommend doing this in terms of rolling shutter tests. We probably shouldn't be playing Call of Duty with our cameras. Which actually brings me to the third part of how to battle rolling shutter, especially when you're using the Blackmagic Pixis. So the third and final way to combat rolling shutter is to just have intentional camera movements. When I was learning a lot more things about camera operation and cinematography, one of the things that I was told is that if you're going to move the camera, you better have a good reason. But even more than that, you also have to have the right grip and the right accessories in order to make those camera movements make sense. Even auditing my own behavior, setting up a handheld rig and shooting at the back of a trunk, 
isn't the way that you can get tracking shots from the back of a car. Typically things are going to be nailed down on suction cups or have a gimbal or make things a little bit smoother. If you have unwanted shakes with a slower shutter readout camera, you're going to notice those things. However, that's not necessarily the intention of the Pixis to begin with. We've already kind of covered that it's more for traditional workflows. And if you have a slower shutter readout on one of those cameras, throwing it anywhere you want and expecting a good result in terms of that rolling shutter might not be the smartest thing in the world. In fact, you might not actually get the results that you want. Even when I have things on sticks and I'm doing a pan, if I slow down the pan, it doesn't look as wobbly and as jittery. If I speed it up and I start playing Call of Duty with my camera while I'm shooting handheld, obviously you're going to see those wobbles back and forth. I'm not here to tell you that there isn't rolling shutter in this camera, but I'm also here to tell you that if you are more intentional with your camera movement, that's a way of mitigating things because you only move the camera when you actually need to move it. Again, this isn't a smaller mirrorless camera where you kind of throw it in your backpack, vlog around with it, and shoot all kinds of handheld without any sort of consideration. You are gonna have to keep those things in mind. When I shoot on handheld with this camera rigged up, I'll go for an easy rig, adds more stabilization and also saves my back. When I'm shooting on sticks, you might not have any rolling shutter because the camera's not moving. And especially if you're shooting things like interviews, it's very hard to see rolling shutter artifacts unless something's moving incredibly quickly. If I'm shooting something like race cars or moving vehicles, this actually might not be the right camera for you. And that's all what I'm trying to say here is know the right tool for the right job, but also have context. And when you're moving the camera, especially knowing that the readout's a little bit slower, you're going to have to have a little bit more intention with your camera movement, which is a skill and something that you should have as a filmmaker anyways. That being said, I hope you guys learned the three different ways that you can mitigate some of those rolling shutter artifacts. You can window in on the sensor, you can use a driver stabilization and eventually resolve, or you could just be more intentional with the footage that you are getting. Actually, you should be doing all three of those things. Do all three of those things. But the YouTube algorithm thinks that you probably want to watch this video over here. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, I feel my